Melbourne, Australia is known for its bustling nightlife, fantastic cafes, thriving art scene and a wide array of sporting events. The metropolis houses more than 5 million Australian residents and is known by many as the world's most livable city. But Melbourne has decided to make their city even better by building the Westgate Tunnel Project, an expanded freeway, twin tunnels and a bridge that will connect the city and the neighbouring areas to the west eliminating traffic and improving the daily lives of residents and visitors. However, as with most ginormous construction projects, the Westgate Tunnel project has faced some serious issues and still isn't complete. The original proposal was released by transportation company Transburban in 2014. They believed that the estimated $5.5 billion project would not only alleviate congestion on the M1, but also minimize trucks passing through the residential areas of the city, and generally make getting around Melbourne much easier. By 2017, Transburban's plans had been approved by the Victorian government and they successfully broke ground in January 2018. At the time of approval, the estimated cost was $5.5 billion, and Transburban agreed to pay two-thirds of the bill if the government would cover the rest. The Victorian government reportedly agreed to contribute $400 million from state funds and asked the federal government of Australia to fund the difference. However, even though the federal government eventually denied their request, the state authorities decided to go ahead with the project anyway, paying the last third of the investment all on their own. Little did they know that the project was going to cost a lot more than they originally planned. The Westgate Tunnel project was changed several times throughout the funding, planning and even during the first few years of construction. The final plan is to use the Western Distributor for eastbound traffic via twin tunnels, which will lead to a new bridge over the Maribyrnong River. However, while they projected that Victoria's big build, as they started to call it, would be completed by September 2022, that day has long passed, and construction is still very much in progress. The Victorian state government and Transburban have been working together to manage the project in order to ensure a smooth, on-time and cost-efficient build, but it certainly has not gone to plan. As with any large construction project, the Westgate Tunnel first needed to pass an Environment Effect Statement. EES, but fortunately it did so with flying colours. The EES, which was released in 2017, one year before construction began, stated that the project would not only divert 8,000 trucks from the existing bridge every day, but would also provide easier access to the port and remove 9,300 trucks from local roads every day. It also reported that the planned project would improve air quality in Melbourne overall, but could decrease the quality for residents living on Millers and Williamstown roads. However, the Maribyrnong City Council responded to this information with extreme criticism. They believed that the EES was flawed. The council said in a statement, In truth, this is not an EES. Rather, it's a sales brochure. It's designed to sell the project and to create the illusion of independent, rigorous analysis. It also noted that while the EES claims that several areas of Melbourne will see fewer trucks than before, some areas, such as Millers Road, will see 7,000 more trucks every day than they do now. The Minister for Planning, Richard Wynne, addressed the Council and the public's concerns in 2017, stating that there were both positive and negative aspects of the Westgate Tunnel. He recommended that the plan be adjusted to ensure the residents of Millers and Williamstown roads didn't suffer so many of the downsides. However, it seems that no real changes were made and the build went ahead as originally planned in 2018. They started the first phase of the project by diverting traffic from the North Yarra main sewer, then began widening the Westgate Freeway. In 2019, the next phase began as they laid the foundations for the new bridge over the Marabinong River. In August of that year, they started digging for the tunnel, which is when the real trouble began. The major aspect of the project that was causing extreme delays and increased costs was the twin tunnel build. First, they decided to double the length of the twin tunnel, which means 1.5 million cubic meters of rock and soil need to be removed, adding a whopping $1.2 billion to the original estimate. But then, something far worse happened. They realized that the 1.5 million cubic meters of soil were contaminated, and removing it was not only slightly dangerous for local residents, but it was also going to cost a whole lot more to dispose of. 
But even though they tackled the funding issue, Transburban still needed to assess the contaminated soil problem. Essentially, when they started digging, they found that the soil was full of PFAs, or synthetic chemical compounds, left behind by previous builds. The volume of PFAs in the soil was a huge problem as it became impossible to dispose of the contaminated soil in a safe way. The construction company CPB Contractors told Transburban that they needed an additional $500 million, or even $1 billion, to deal with the contaminated soil, and if they didn't get the funding they needed, they would stop working immediately. Over the course of the next year, hundreds of workers were laid off, construction all but stopped, and Transburban as well as the local government were being dragged over the coals by residents of Melbourne. They not only felt that Transburban needed to step up and pay to have the unsafe soil removed, fearing that if they didn't, it would end up in the city's water supply. Between 2021 and 2022, the Victorian government agreed to spend another $1.9 billion, and Transburban said they'd give another $2.2 billion in order to properly dispose of the soil and get the public back on side. However, more problems arose as they couldn't get approval from any local landfills for the soil. Finally, at the end of 2022, when the entire project was meant to be completed, Transburban announced that due to these issues, it wasn't likely that the Westgate Tunnel would even be completed by the end of 2023. While all this was going on, other parts of the project, including the bridge, were still under construction. Almost the entire project will be made from concrete, which is being produced at a precast concrete factory, Transburban built specifically for the Westgate tunnel. It's important to note that while some projects focus on the sustainability of their building materials, the Westgate Tunnel is doing quite the opposite. Transburban and the local Victorian government are not claiming that their concrete, steel or pipelines are better for the environment than the existing roads in Melbourne, but they are saying that the project itself will have a large and positive impact. In addition to cutting down significantly on port to city traffic, which of course will cut down on emissions and improve air quality, they have also promised to add nearly 9 hectares of parks and wetlands. The Government of Melbourne says that along with building the bridge, twin tunnels and expanding the freeway, they will also be planting 17,000 trees and shrubs, using the new wetlands to treat stormwater, rehabilitating creek banks and developing natural animal habitats. But what many Melbourne citizens really want to know is how this project will affect their wallets as well as their daily lives. The truth is that, as the Minister of Planning said before construction even began, there are several pros and cons to this plan for the City of Melbourne. According to the local government, they've included $10 million in the project's budget to fund community projects, as well as add 14 kilometres of trails for bicycling and walking and safer pedestrian bridges throughout the area. So, in theory, the Westgate Tunnel project will improve the daily lives of local residents at least if they plan to walk or bike. But while traffic for motorists should ease in many places, other streets may see an increase in congestion. Several groups such as the Coalition and the Greens believe that the government and Transburban are making overly optimistic forecasts for how traffic will move and aren't telling Melbourne residents the whole truth. Even if things do turn out exactly as they have projected, and overall emissions decrease, congestion eases, and most residential neighbourhoods see fewer trucks than before, it will still come at quite a cost to the citizen of the city who drive. Of course, a 10 to $11.9 billion project needs to make money somehow, and their plan is, and has always been, to toll every motorist who passes through the twin tunnels. As of 2022, the plan was to charge cars between $3.57 and $5.72 motorcycles between $1.79 and $2.86, and small commercial vehicles from $5.72 to $9.15, depending on where they enter and exit. It's important to note that the local residents of Melbourne will certainly have to pay to use the twin tunnels, but that is to be expected. What's surprising about this project is that Transburban's original contract stated that they would receive all profits from the tolls for 10 years, making the company billions as a result. In 2019, when the contract was signed, state opposition leader Michael O'Brien spoke out against the agreement saying who does a deal where Transburban puts in $4 billion and gets $37 billion out of it. But even with the question of traffic flow, funding, profits, soil contamination and the controversial EES, the Westgate Tunnel or the Victoria Big Build is still happening, and in fact they are now well on their way to completing the giant project. 
According to the Victorian government, by December 2023, the twin tunnels have been completely dug out, and work is already underway to build the ventilation and road deck. Assembly of the Maribyrnong River Bridge is well underway, and 250 beams on the Hyde Street's on and off ramps have been installed. Neither the government nor Transburban have released a new expected completion date, though residents of Melbourne, even those who originally opposed the build, are certainly hoping that it will be sooner rather than later. And with most of the issues either resolved or simply cast aside, some experts believe that they could see a completed Westgate tunnel by 2025. Excited for more construction wonders? Click the video on your screen to unravel the most disaster-prone construction projects across the world. See you there.